a slightly different flavour to the women's competition. Out come the first pair of semi-finalists. Time for the first recurve men's semi-final here in Shanghai. Let's go straight to the sheeting line. On target number one, representing the Netherlands. Steve Weiler. <laughs> On target number two, representing the Republic of Korea. Oh, Jin Hyuk. The line judge for this matchup is Shannon Russell Kite. Well, two possible outcomes. There is a gold medal match spot. So the first semi final is between Steve Weiler from the Netherlands, the world number 13 at 26 years old, against the 41 year old Korean Oh Jin Hyuk, the world number 18. Oh won the Olympic title in 2012 and was part of the team that won the Olympic gold in 2020. Steve Weiler was the mixed team silver medalist along with. Gabby Schlusser in Tokyo, but won this very competition back in 2017. Yeah, I think the, the premise of this match is uh, Steve has to go get to this final. He has had to beat uh, both the current Olympic champion, Mete Gazos, and uh, the number one ranked uh, archer of this competition, Brady Ellison. So he is known to be able to beat some very high level archers and he did it this week um, and if he wants to get a shot at the gold he'll have to do the same to the 2012 london olympic champion yeah the longevity of O is uh, the fascinating thing here he just nice. well showed no signs of retiring yeah and i don't know if he has any uh, uh, current world records i think he does on some distances of the feeder route but uh, in any case, I think he has the world record of uh, amount of times uh, he said he was going to retire and still go back to the uh, <laughs> finals venue. Oh, so there have been signs of retirement, <laughs> just they just haven't come to fruition. Eight. Well, I'm drifting out to the left. Leaves an open door for the Dutch archer. No. And the nine is enough for a 28 in the first well, two set points. Um, not really a huge amount of time to talk during that first set. They are shooting at great speed. Yeah, they're not uh, <laughs> making any fuss about it. They're just doing what they're here to do. World number 18, Steve Weiler is ranked world number 13. Was there anything in particular that you spotted from that, that uh, eight? I mean, it's not a bad score, but uh, it stands out. A bit of a rough release, maybe, but uh, he always has a bit of a rotation in his hand when he releases. Uh, typically, it's quite a fluent movement, and uh, this time it was a bit choppy. Uh, maybe that's the, the only thing that I could really discover with that shot. But it was also a bit quicker than what we're used to seeing from him, so it might have just not been his uh, greatest timing. And his side might, may not have been in the middle. Well, you know all these archers really well, but perhaps the Dutch archers are a little bit better than, than everyone else. Is it me or does Steve appear to Steve Weiler, that is, appear to be just a little bit more settled and controlled with his emotions this season? Uh, so far, what we've seen from him, uh, both here and at the Grand Prix in Lillechal, yeah, it, it seems like he's more um, at a certain level with his emotion rather than up and down. Um, and I think it's also just that he's uh, matured a bit on the on the stage. Uh, the first time he was here um, was also his first World Cup uh, in 2017. Um, he has a bit more experience under his belt now, and uh, yeah, well, it's showing in the final rounds that he's shooting. Uh, didn't really have a great uh, World Cup in Antalya, but he did have the European Archery Grand Prix, and he had a great indoor season. So, yeah, he uh, for sure knows how to get into the finals. Eight. Or not, too close to call. Well, oh, into the eight, but that's marked for a measure. Eight. And that's drifted ah. out to the eight. I did notice the uh, wind slightly picked up again on the uh, shooting line. And we got the, the flags to see that it's uh, starting to blow again. 
A very important end here for uh, Oh Jin Hyuk. I think uh, his second arrow has a very good chance of uh, hitting the line, but I only got a very slight look at it. Um, but if it does hit the line, that means that he tied up the match. So the judge has this uh, in his hands, friend. Well, it's yes, it, it, the call certainly is in his or her hands. They have to uh, go and measure that second arrow, at least have a look at it. Uh, it was exceptionally close, uh, as for sure. Too difficult to call uh, from even from the shooting line. There doesn't seem to be a huge amount of comfort as to whether that one is in or out. I think it's in. Looks like it, doesn't it? This is one of those moments where if I was well, sat at home on my couch, I would have probably scrolled back in the video, pause it, see if it's in or out, and then go back to the live moments, but cannot really do that here. No, you can't do it when it's live, can you? The third set now. will shoot first on target two. That was the arrow in question. On the scoreboards it says 2 versus 2, so I guess it was upgraded to a 9. So all square, no starting set number three. Bit of a choppy release again. Um, I feel like he's struggling to get the right expansion going. Um, and especially some years ago, we would see him just be super comfortable in his shot and everything would look very dynamic and, and nice and fluent. Um, right now, I'm not really seeing that same Ojin Hyuk, but... Nine. It's not bad by any means, it's just not uh, the same level of fluidity that we've uh, seen before from him. Nine. Also see Vala doing a little bit of uh, Boquondo correction. Yeah, which is not unique for him, obviously. We've uh, we've seen that a lot from him. Um, and that's just him. His mindset is do whatever it takes to get that arrow in the middle. Nine. It doesn't matter how it looks or feels, as long as the arrow goes in the middle. Steve has done a, a couple of technique changes over the last couple of years. Um, and Nine. it has Two. mostly it mostly means that he has a bit more of a stable base um, to, to shoot from. Uh, he used to have a bit of a higher shoulder, he used to have a bit of a different anchor point, uh, but over the years he's kind of polished his technique to be more consistent and more stable. Um, so now where before he, uh, he could shoot a really small group and then uh, like a, a slightly bigger group, now it's more consistent. He, he's just decrease the group size bit. Well, whilst we're talking about, I was just trying to have a look at that target of oh, Jin Hyuk, because that second arrow was right next to the line. Now, I think that might well have been marked up. It sounds like it has in the venue, and that means it's 28 plays 27, and oh, Jin Hyuk has come from 2-0 down to lead 4-2. So now we'll see Viola shoot first in the fourth set. It has to come from behind. Can he maintain his composure here? No. It doesn't feel to me as if Steve is throwing this match away. It, it doesn't feel... He had that 1-8 on the right that was not the greatest shot. For the rest, he's just been shooting decent shots, but not really hitting the middle. Um, and Oh Jin Hyuk had those, those two no. arrows that just hit the line that made a huge difference for the match. Because if, they, if both of those arrows didn't hit the line, we would have been in a tight situation right now. Ten. Small margins, sure. but that's uh, just the third 10 from... Steve Varner couldn't come at a better time. Shooting first in this particular set has the ability to put some pressure on O. Ten. 
It seems like he's not really feeling it as such. Or thriving in it, that is also a possibility. Yes. Good, 29 for Viola. Now 10 required to match that 29 and share the set points. Oh, look at that, just when it's needed. And as you said, I think it is a case of the former rather than the latter. I think he's just ignoring it completely, the pressure that uh, Viola clearly put on him there. Yeah, he's, he's done this so many times, um, and again, so many different archers. I think he has kind of become oblivious of the, the fact that you should be nervous for a situation like this. Yeah, and uh, we turn our attention now to Steve Viola, who will shoot first in the fourth, uh, sorry, in the fifth set, the final regulation set. Uh, he's really got to put everything to one side and shoot just as he did then. I mean, ideally, one point more. Yeah, and I think the last shot that we just saw uh, is a good indication that Steve is uh, uh, comfortable at the moment because it wasn't a great shot, but he managed to steer it into the 10, and I think that's a sign that he's... Uh, feeling good about this shooting at the moment. Well, I think I spotted one other thing uh, in that uh, little break between the sets, and that's that O's teammates all seem to be standing right there. Look, there they are in the background. They seem to be standing behind Steve Viola. Are they cheering him on? <laughs> I can hardly imagine. They might be uh, looking at the arrow flights and Nine. gathering information for him. Um, but what's most likely is that it's just a spot out of the sunlight good call that's getting to be quite close to the line and i think that we just picked it up as he was actually redrawing he'd start to come back from the initial process good recovery from o nine Zero. Again, it's not necessarily bad. It, it, the shots are pretty solid. Uh, nothing special going on there, but he's just not hitting the amount of tens that we're used to seeing from Steve. Nine. So that's uh, a good setup shot here. Oh, Jin Hyuk putting his middle arrow into the nine. Gives him that mini advantage. Ten. Remember, he only needs to match Viola's score here to get the one point for the win and a place in the gold medal match. Nine or more to go through. Looks like it might just be a nine. Could see a little bit of the line on the other side. So it does look like it's a 28 place 28 and a shared set points in the fifth. They shake hands, uh, Viola, with a smile on his face. He knows that was a tight one. And as you said, Chef, he wasn't shooting badly. It's just that oh, Jin Hyuk just wasn't affected at all by any of the pressure that Steve put on him.